Yes, my people, we are back. Cairo is here once more, declaring the word, getting the scripture out. Thank you for those who subscribe. Those who have not, come on, help me out. Fighting for the truth, declaring the truth. Very important. Now, today we're going to deal with several things. You know, we're going to deal with some very important things and correct some things, man, because we're living in a serious world. And the fact, things when we talk about, when we, when we, when we do not start out, start it out with the truth and becomes um, eternalized and become a part of our whole DNA, become, uh, part of our whole mental makeup. It's hard to get rid of it, man. It becomes so deeply ingrained. And so when we, we, we bring the truth now to you, and it seems like a lie because you have been so indoctrinated. You have, you know, you get these things in your head and you think you thought they are true. They are not true. A lot of stuff that we believe over the years in, you know, uh, we, we, we take into our uh, mental repertoire and think it's um, it's true. But when you investigate these things and, and search them or the finance, a lot of things that we once believed to be true was not true. But the word of God cannot be a lie. It's, it's fundamentally, essentially true. So we have to correct every belief that we hold on to, to be true uh, with the word of God. You know, I was listening to this, uh, this passing through on YouTube last night, and I hear this, uh, this person who call himself a prophet. Yeah, I think he prophet passion job or something like that. Prophet, prophet, prophet passion job. Talking about Abram and Sarah. And then he mentioned a passage that is very prominent within the uh, Christian community. And it, um, in Romans 4.17. In Romans 4.17. So let us... Turn there a bit. Check it out for you. So people talk about it. People even use it to, to define what faith is. And it's not as all they think it is. And it's um, the word of faith movement is making it very popular out of context. And a lot of people believing believe it it's so but it is not so so Roman 4 17 it says uh as it was written, I have made to you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom ye believe. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that they were not. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. If you read the whole context, you talk about, you know, Paul is talking about Abraham and, uh, and Isaac and the father of many nations because Abraham come the exhibit of faith. And so we, those who trust in Christ by faith become the children of Abraham because he was, he, he was saved by grace through faith. Um, he was the father of faith to become his father when we demonstrate faith in Christ. 
But a lot of people take that verse and run with it and believe that you, a person, an individual, a man, a human being, that verse is, 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 is talking about them as human. People talk about it all the time. Hey, you have those call things into being as though they were. Those call things into being as though they were. And they song, you know, you hear it all the time that way. But what, when you listen to what the verse said, the God, the God, not the man, the God, it is God's prerogative. This is part of God's prerogative. He's an omnipotent being. Um, be today. It's life in himself. Source of all life. Um, uh, the most perfect being in the world, universe and beyond is God. Not man, no, no, has nothing to do with us. But yet they take this verse unto themselves and want people to, to say these things as though they have the ability to create reality, create the own, real, the own world, to name things and to, to use word to create the own um, universe or cosmos, their own personal universe and their own personal cosmos, and it's a lie. You see for itself, it's not man, it is God only who has that power. That's the very power that um, he used to create the universe, ex nihilo. You have another word, I mean, ex nihilo nihil fit. That's what happened to those who want to declare and decree things. Nothing will ever happen. There's a Latin word. It said, Vox et, Vox et, Pretoria nihil, Vox et Pretoria nihil, voice and nothing more. Every single person who claim that they can decree and declare anything into existence, that's what it is. Voice and nothing more. They can affect nothing. You are not given that prerogative, but you will never get it, even in eternity. You are just a human being that needs to depend upon God and pray. And leave things to God, who is in charge. Why people believe these things is beyond me. And they have the written word in their hand to believe and to correct this error. This fallacious, preposterous nonsense. No human being can declare and decree anything. We must speak as all the Bible speak and reveal it, reveal to us. We, we, we make prayer and supplication in Philippians 4, 6, 7 said, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. We thank, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The Bible uses these terms, supplication and prayer. And when you're praying to God, we don't, in the midst of his talking about you decree, decreeing and declaring anything. You just pray to God and say, God, I trust you. I'm asking you to let your will be done. That is all we pray. We don't take over from God and want to creating, create anything ex nihilo. When you're praying for someone or anything that you're praying for, we must always ask, God will to be done. Nothing more. Don't believe that you have any power to pronounce nothing. You do not. We must pray and ask God. God, I'm asking you. Please. We come to God with humility. There are people that pray and I heard this person one time say that if you say, God, I beg you. You're, you're faithless. You have no faith. And these are the kind of nonsense people put out there. And people believe these things. There's a verse in uh, Lamentation. In Lamentation, I think it's 
the atomic bomb to this who disbelief about the cling and the cling anything you have the power to do that you have none whatsoever and this word is a sharp to the sword right into the heart of this nonsense he said lamentation 337 Who can speak? Who can speak? What man? Who? Who can speak and have it happen? If the Lord, if Yahweh has not decreed it. Let me read it again. Who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it it goes on to say it is not from the mouth is it not from the mouth of the most high that both calamities and good things happen when god when god say anything that you take part um take pay happen in the future he said, I'm, I'm watching over my word to make sure what I said come to pass. That's what God said. Only God can speak and have things happen because only he has the power to bring things to pass. Only he has to call things like when you look in Genesis 1, he called things by the word of his power, called things into being. Things disappear. Now the God has that power. No human being will ever have that power and has that power. Keep that in mind. The whole, this whole, these belief that you find in the book called Secrets and the, um, the Shark. And all of these things that you find teach, um, taught in these, um, word of faith movement positive confession and all of these things this all of this go to the new thought movement in the 1800 like by um franz mesmer and phineas quimbe and it does and then kenneth Hagin and pass all the way down into the it's a conglomeration of different philosophical thoughts and new age mysticism you know, visualization and mesmerism and, and, and hypnotism and a lot of a lot of mixture of different uh, philosophical and ideological belief and system and find its way into the, 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 the uh, word of faith movement and it poison the minds of millions who believe this garbage. Why can't we just stick to all the Bible word things? People have been praying for centuries, never know anything about decreeing and declaring anything. And all of a sudden, you find it ways in the Christian, the Christian community. And a lot of times people, they come up with, with different thoughts and, 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 um, expression and in, encapsulated these things in some like mnemonics so mnemonic way that you can you know it is saying that you can remember just like all this, this the proverbs are written these copies that easily to remember and even paul has to deal with it people coin phrases and to express their belief and hold on to these sentiment and something that is fundamental and uh, even Paul have to correct some that some some of the Corinthian hold concerning, you know, the body and stuff like that. In everything is permissible, and you know, and Paul has to correct it and and, and so on. And even through the New Testament, right, people, the children of Israel have coined terms. So like for instance, the father he the sower grapes, and the children teach our certain hedge. And and God has to tell them, so listen to me. I'm tired of this. Stop it. You can read that in Ezekiel 18, 1 and 2, and Jeremiah 31, 30. 
God tell him to don't don't stop saying that thing in the in, in the land of Judah. Don't say it anymore. Anyone that is sin will die of their sin. Nobody will be accountable for anybody's sins. Don't say it anymore. And this is it is this is it's equivalent to many things that have been passed to run as little hadages and aphorism within the Christian faith that is not they do not encapsulate the the truth of scripture really people just you know, form, form these things and, and and then becomes some kind of maxim for them and it's spread like wildfire through the christian community um so when it come on so in what we're talking about with this ability, God ability to call things into existence and all things were people redefine what the Bible said about let, 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 let's look at what the Bible said about faith. Now faith is a confidence. Some some version say it differently. Faith is the substance of things all for the evidence of things not seen. This is Uni um, NIV. So it says, Now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Talking about the the faith all of fame people. Now, I heard uh, this speaker, T.D. Jakes, once said, Fate is the ability to call things into existence and though they were. So you take it from Romans and bring it over and replace the definition of fate as according to the Bible in, 11, in Hebrew 11 verse 1 and said, Fate is the ability to call things into existence and though they were. It's not true. That's not biblical. That's unbiblical and it's a lie. Faith is not the ability to call anything to him, to him, to being. Faith is to trust God who has the ability to do that. If you, if, if any one of us did have that power, you wouldn't pray. No need for prayer. And being a that we are so sinful and wicked and corrupt, you know what kind of world that would be? Everybody has the ability to be like, to do God work, to call things and perform supernatural feats and you know what kind of world that would be? And our very personal life, as I said before, is a testimony against this belief. You suffer, you're sick, you have financial debt, you have pain in the body. There are circumstances surrounding that you have no control over. You have enemies that fight against you every day. And yet you cannot do anything about it. You cannot. Why? If you have that ability. Why? You don't have enough faith, they say. Then why not you can draw up that faith and do all of these things? Change your life. Make it what you want to be. Have a dream for your life. Dream up a, up a category and a state of a fear that you think you want your life to be. And then you speak that into existence. Have it happen. And let me see. Every single one of us have our problem. Every single one of us are resisting against sin. And if we don't have any bodily pain, joints, pain, ache, or any form of genetic disease, incurable disease, or whatsoever it is, why don't we speak these things and declare them away? Why not? Because you do not have that ability. That's why we need God. And then he, even God, if it's not his will, it will not come to pass. Come on, people, man. Use the word of God 
to correct fallacious and preposterous belief that you have learned or picked up along the way. It's not biblical. I don't even go as far to say that. Let me declare what the Bible say. The Bible, I declare that the Bible said by faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience that. You don't bother with that. Just read it. Just read it and say, uh, Hebrew 11 verse 5 says, don't need all of that. Stop with the clearing and, the, and, and, and um, because Lamentation 3, 37, 38 pushes so right through it. Let us just pray, man. Let us just pray. Let us pray to God. Let's pray. Peter pray when Darkus was sick or Tabitha was sick. He go into the room, tell him to leave and knelt down and he pray. Didn't declare and declare anything. And then he, he turned to the body and said, Tabitha rise. You can read it First Kings 17, 19 to 23. 2 Kings 4, 32, 35, Elijah and Elisha pray about a, this, um, a different, they have similar uh, circumstances, which is, you know, when they pray about their little boy. What did they pray? Stretch himself over and pray. No decree, no declaring anything. And within context of Romans, just read 4 verse 17. Read the entire passage. Talk about Abram. Remember the situation with Abram? They couldn't, they were so old and uh, they were biological and reproductively dead. And um, God, the God who can call life from non life. A God who there's a barren wilderness that's with hard land. Seems like no life can spring up here. God can do that. Can bring life from non-life. God make a life come from the already dead bodies. Isaac. Isaac. And then when on the sacrificial um, platform, that his father, God was testing Abram and placed him in the, the, the woods ready to kill him. The Bible said Ab, um, Isaac was as if he were already dead. Abram had the faith that if he had killed him, God could take him from the dead. Jesus was told by his father that he was given authority of all things. And um, and he raised all of us that become Christians were dead. Give us new life, cause new life for us into being by his power, because he's the power of God unto salvation. Come on, people, man, read the Bible. Read within context. None of us can ex nihilo anything. None of us. The moment we open our mouth to decree and to decree, clear anything, it will always be ex nihilo, non nihil fit. Ex nihilo. That's not our prerogative. That's God's. God's only God can bar things. That's a, that's a, the 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 word with God create. Only God can bar. Bar the Hebrew word. Ex nihilo nihil fit is for those who claim want to, but it will never happen because out of nothing, nothing comes. Only God can bring something from nothing. No man can. Vox et prateria ni il. Vox et prateria ni il. The Latin word for voice and sound 
but nothing more. I declare and decree this. Nothing but sound. Sounds and voice. That's it. We're called to pray. That's all Bible. Before I read this passage, there's a, you know, sometimes when you listen, you, you hear this, sometimes you hear people, you, hear, you, you see some things on TV, like seven principles of pow powerful prayer and, and, um, and 10 ways how to preach out of prayer powerful prayer life for God to answer and all of these things like prayer is some kind of manipulation or to curse God in doing things it seems it's the same thing like sometimes when you listen people come up with this this one plant or this one herb or this one fruit that can seems to cure all diseases There are things that can surely affect our prayer and the answering of our prayer. When we're not living for God, when we're disobedient to his way and his will, it will affect our prayer. When we pray and miss a con to James, it will affect our prayer. You know what? Listen to what Peter says. She may be a weak. That's talking about First Peter three seventy nine. She may the woman may be a weak, maybe weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's uh, in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayer will not be hindered. If a man mistreat his wife if a husband if you especially if a christian husband and you mistreat a wife yeah surely can be an unsafe person if you are saved if you call yourself a believer in christ and you mistreat a wife you don't treat her properly according to scripture your prayer will be hindered and of course, it must be the, the obverse side of this. If a woman don't treat her husband as how she ought to by scripture, of course her prayer will be hindered. Beloved, in 1 John 21, 22, now I think in no, I don't think this is right, but it's in First John, but 21st, I don't remember the chapter, but in 21, 22, I have to go back and find that. Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, if your heart does not condemn, if your heart does not condemn, if we have confidence before God, and whatsoever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandment. And do the things that are pleasing in his sights. You know, when we're talking about prayer and answering prayer, we have to take the whole scripture, total scripture, total scriptura, the whole scripture, total body of scripture, and bring to bear upon the, upon the, the, the subject on the discussion, which is prayer. We talk about Jesus said, if you're asking anything in my name, we'll grant it unto you. Don't believe that everything you ask Jesus for is going to grant it to you. And it doesn't matter if you, you pray and you said in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus is not some kind of uh, attachment that guarantees that your prayer, your prayer is going to answer. In the name of Jesus, being in his name, in his power, in his, 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 in his name, according to his will. Prayer is about the will of God. Not about our will. And when, if we really want our prayer answered many, many occasions and many times, we have to be obedient to the word of God. We have to live as a Christian 
in according to his word. We can't go off on a, like a lone wolf McQuay, like a maverick and do our own things and, and then come and kneel before God and, uh, and, and ask, put forth our supplication or petition and a request to God and expect to give up an answer. It will never happen. Never will. How we live our life will affect our prayer, our prayer life. If God will answer a prayer or not. We speak about the power of prayer. We, we talk about prayer changes things. Prayer in of itself has no power. Prayer in of itself has no power. The one who has the power is the one in whom we pray to. He has all the power. Prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. Putting forth our, our supplication. This is We talk these ways still. You know, we, we, we talk these ways, but in the correct way. Is that prayer in of itself has no power. If we're praying to a, you can pray to a statue. The prayer would be worthless, garbage, useless. But if we're praying to a true living God who hears and answers prayer and of their power and the omnipotence, the omniscience, the omnicompetence to do what his children ask for, it give you prayerness. It give you prayer relevance, purposefulness, usefulness, necessity. That's why we have to pray. It's fundamentally important that we pray. There's a person that says that if we don't pray, either we are omnipotent or we are foolish. If we don't pray. Every Christian is not optional. It's a necessity. We have to pray. This is how we talk to our Father. This is how we talk to our Lord and Jesus Christ. Next prayer doesn't change anything. God changes things. Not praying of itself. We pray. We're commanded to pray. Pray very often, frequently. Pray to the God who can change things. Pray to the God who hear and answer prayer and have the power to change things. We are the addresser. God is the addressing. We come to him and we tell him and talk to him as always would. We tell him anything. Prayer is not, it's a very simple. It's not complicated. People talk about prayer as there are some kind of rules, some laws. And of course, there are ways, basic ways to address God as Jesus explained and gave the disciple a model of prayer. But let this songwriter capture prayer very well. Let me read it. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire. Uttered or unexpressed, the motion of hidden fires that trembles in the breast. Prayer is the burden of a sigh, the falling of a tear, the upward glancing of an eye, when no, when none but God is near. Prayer is the simplest form of speech that infant lips can try. Prayer, the supplement strains that reach the majesty and high. Prayer is the Christian vital breath, the Christian's native hair. His watchword at the gates of death, he enters heaven with prayer. Prayer is the contrite sinner's voice returning from its ways. While angels in their songs rejoice and cry, Behold, he prays. O thou by whom we come to God, the life, the truth, the way, the path of prayer thyself hath trod, Lord, teach us how to pray. Be 
beautiful songs. Beautiful song. That's what prayer basically is. Simple. And Jesus can confirm this. In St. Matthew 6, verse 5, Jesus said, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue on the street corner to be seen by others like Pharisees. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is unseen, that your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Go in your sacred. And that's why congregational prayer in church is different from when you pray at home or you pray by yourself with God. Totally, radically different. Then, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do what you need before. Let me read that again. Do not be like them, for their fathers knows what you need before you ask him. Before we pray, God knows what we're going to pray for and he knows what we need really, more than how we think we need it. And, and so when you already have it prepared, tell me, when by the time we have to pray, it's here. It's answered already. It's on its way. Do not be like the pagans. Do not be like the, the, the Pharisees with big word, fancy word. Not that you can pray using big word because when you say, oh, God Almighty, Omnipotent Father, the Omniscient One, those words are big words. But we don't, we don't pray uh, with, with the, the cognizance of the word um, you know, where you, you know, like you, you think you have to use these, these massive long words to blandish God, and make him to flatter him and stuff like that. Coming the prayer is coming from the heart. An effective prayer don't have to be long; it can be a sentence, um, laconic, succinct prayer. It doesn't have to be long with. Elaborate words, big words. Just tell him. Talk, talk to him. That's it. It's not have to be formalized. Prior, spontaneous. Just talk to him. Just free. Just come to go to him and say, Father, this thing's bugging me from last week. You know, I don't know what to do, but I'm I, I'm here before you. I, I'm asking for your wisdom to deal with this thing. Talk to him. He said, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, you address God. We address him as though we are talking to God, not man. We have come to him with solemnity, gravity, the highest reverence, piety, Kneel before him and bow before him because this is God you're talking to. Said, Our oh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Not my will. Not your will. Unhurt as it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive, have given our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Satan. This is how we are to pray. And 
And there's a there's a very beautiful passage in James. Well, James 4 13. Oh God. He said, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow will go to do this or to that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? Why? You do not know what even will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you are to say, if it is the Lord's will. You make our plans all the time and, you know, doing your stuff, but you never ask if it's the will of God. Of course, you can make plans, but to pray, I mean, if it, everything that we as Christians do, we have to involve God in it. Everything. So God, is this your will? If it's your will for us, if it's not your will, frustrate it. Uh, it's the business, you know, investment, whatever it is. No matter how simple it is. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. If it is the Lord's will, I'm, I'm, I, I will do this. And if it's the Lord's will, I will invest my money. If it's the Lord's will, I, you know, it's all about God's will. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. As such boasting is evil. Always go off on your own self, baby, like you're the man. I guess right here you can declare and declare and decree. You don't need God will. All you need to do say it and declare it, decree and declare it, the universe will answer your prayer according to the book Secret. If anyone then knows the good they hard to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. That's what it was born into. Sin by omission leads to sin by commission. It's always about God's will, man. And in in uh, Romans eight twenty six. Bible speaks, man. Let the scripture speaks. Let the scripture speaks. Read it for you. Romans eight twenty six. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Talk about the weakness. We, we don't know a lot. In the spiritual walk, we still are ignorant in many things. We're weak. Imperfect. Immature. We still need to learn a lot. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit Himself, personal pronoun, the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. 
using personal pronoun. The Holy Spirit himself. Reflexive pronoun. Himself. Intercedes. Impersonal it cannot intercede. Take person, living beings to intercede on behalf of another. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Jesus Christ is the as an intercessor, right? He's in he interceding on our behalf, he's the high priest. But also the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is our comforter. But I will give you another comforter, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit interceded on our behalf. In our prayer life, the Holy Spirit interceded for us though through, through wordless groans. I, we have no clue how God communicate in the Trinitarian life of God. Or they communicate to each to one another. He talk about wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts, God, knows the mind of the Spirit. You see, in the Trinitarian, one being within one being exists. Three eternal persons that's co equal, co powerful, co eternal. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of the Father, the Father knows the mind of the Holy Spirit, and if the Son knows the mind of the Father and the Holy Spirit. One cannot do what the other cannot. This unity within the Trinity, a Trinity in the unity. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God. His people intercede for you and I in prayer. In accordance with the will of God. Want me to read it again? Let it get deep down in your head. Get deep down in your brain, man. Prayer is not to curse God to do anything or try to manipulate God to do anything. It's not some kind of um, surgery trying to, you know, persuade like back then in the Greek mythology, humans try to persuade God to do stuff and they cut themselves from like the, the, the men that were with Elijah. Persuading God, doing stuff to persuade him, to blandish him, to Force him, force his hand to do stuff. If that's what you think prayer is, you have no clue what prayer is. Prayer is not about me getting my wish accomplished. Prayer is not about getting my demands accomplished. Prayer is not about getting anything of my interest com uh, accomplished apart from the will of God. I have dreams. I have visions. I have plans. Whatsoever it is. I must always seek God. Always. Because why? Because he's sovereign over all things. It's his world. His providence. is running this world. He decreed things. He ordained things. And within his ordination of all things, prayer is a factor within things. That's why he told us to pray. The why things... For us to pray and if we don't pray you know we have to pray and he who searches our heart knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for god's people in accordance with the will of god james himself tells us that we can pray amiss we pray selfishly. We pray with wrong motives. And we pray for things that we are not to pray for. That's why it is fundamentally important for the Holy Spirit who knows everything that we actually and necessarily need intercede on behalf, intercede unto God on behalf of us.
He knows what we truly need. And so you, you, you come to God and pray and ask Him for things and you think you're going to get everything off. You will not get everything without because it is not His will. Why do you think men pray and they still die? Why do you think we go through so much? We still pray, but we still go through it. This is not the will of God. If you think you are in charge of things in Christianity, man, you don't understand what Christianity is. And then you have like Miles Monroe and all of these people talk about you, man, is the most powerful being in the universe and that God needs man. God need man. Are you crazy? God need none of us to do anything. It's because of his grace and his power. He grants us this privilege. And when God come down and talk with us and tell us to do things, what an honor. What a grand and glorious privilege for, for futile, rebellious, sinful worm as I. That this great, pure, hence, perfectissimus being, the most perfect being, righteous being. Grant me the privilege to send me somewhere to tell some people about anything and to, to use me to preach the gospel. And because of that, you think God needs us? You do not understand anything. God cannot do anything without man. What are you talking about? Give God the glory and praise his name. When we read these things and when we come to understanding of these things, doxology, doxology is supposed to flow from our mouth, not arrogance and boastfulness. Doxology, God Almighty, thank you for this grand and glorious privilege you grant to us, futile, petty creature as I. To participate in redemption in your in in your the spreading of your words even to healing of human bodies this instrument in your hands and yet to talk as if man god need man and god has to heal you because god need your body what garbage is this man Instead of declaring and decreeing, make a supplication to God. Petition God. Pray, man. Just pray. Ask God for his will. Because this either has been dealt a deadly blow by lamentation, by Jeremiah who wrote it. You cannot speak and have nothing happen without God decreed. Remember that. Listen. You know, if you read in Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, I want you to read that for yourself. It is the word of God that runs swiftly. Anything God said must happen has to happen it is not a word that runs swiftly don't take it as your own it is not your word and you do not have that capacity and ability it is god's word not man words not my word not your words Let. And even when I read in Ephesians 6,
we'll talk about the, the, the putting on armors and all of these, the war weapon for, for fighting spiritual warfare. You know. It said, and after it said in 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit. I mean, pray in the spirit. Pray according to the will of the spirit. Pray in the spirit. On all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that, when, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Uh, you know what is the mystery of the gospel? The mystery of the gospel is not a what. The mystery of the gospel is a who. It is Jesus Christ. He is the mystery of God. He is the mystery of the gospel. Everything about him, everything that he teaches, everything that he did and is doing. He is the mystery of God to us. He is the mystery. The gospel is all about Jesus. And all came to save us sinful creatures like us. That's what the gospel is all about. Even the term that you use sometimes, uh, no weapon shall form against us. No weapon shall form against us. You read that in Isaiah 54. It's all about, it's a promise God made to the children of Israel, to his people, that in the millennial reign into the future, no, you don't have to worry about no nation fight against you anymore. But yet we take it on and say, no weapon shall form against us, shall prosper and stuff like that. And we use it all the time when we're fighting battles. You could say that as much as still your teeth, your teeth fall out of your head, your mouth. Till blood come out of your mouth. If God, if it's God will to let some weapons of even your enemy touch you. God determine what weapon will be restrained and will and which weapon touches you. He's in charge. If you declare that no weapon shall form against me, and no, any weapon, no weapon that form against me shall prosper, and, you, and you, you say these things as though it will, that's how it is. God determine everything about us. The weapon that Herod, of Herod's sword, the take off John's brother's head, the apostles James, And all these things that happen to us in life, the weapons drawn against us by the emperors in the first century, by people in our, in our era today, our enemies draw all kind of weapons against us, evil thoughts, evil works. God's allowed son to touch us. It's his will. And they decide which. Look what he did to Job. Look what he did to Job. He allowed Satan to touch him. But couldn't kill him. Right? God is in control, man. God is sovereign. He determined which weapon shall prosper and which weapon shall fail. And we can say that. We can say, God, please, let not the traps of our enemies, let not the evil of our enemies harm us or kill us. Let them fall on their own swords. But God has a last say. He's the judge. 
We pray all the time. Let not this happen to us. Let not God going out now. We pray for safety on the highway. Bam. Accident and you die. You see what I'm saying? Even though many times we pray for things, but it is not the will of God. And and it's hard sometimes to comprehend these things that come to grip with these things, but it's reality. And how we live our life, as I said, how we live our life can affect our pride and can affect everything. We come to worship God, we come to worship with a heart, with wholeheartedness and truth and genuine and genuineness and authenticity. It doesn't matter why do we go to church and just we war. We go to church with a lot of baggage. We go to church with a lot of evils, man. That's why the church is like that. We can be so meticulous and punctilious in doing all of these religious things. But yet, we are far away from God, man. Let me read a passage to explain what I'm talking about. It's also, finish off with this there, you know, we... Uh, The children of Israel was preoccupied with the art of worship. A R T, the art of worship, the whole penalty, the whole ceremony, go through the whole mechanics and perfunctory of worship. They know all of these different sacrifices and all of these things that they ought to do and ought not to do, and they carry these things out meticulously. But they have no heart. Their, their, their disposition, their attitude was wrong. And it doesn't matter how you, you could go to church as many times as you will never miss going to church. You go to up with the Bible and you do all of these things that you ought to do as a Christian. The externalism of Christianity. But what about the eternal reality of our faith? Envy not our brother. Love our brother. Don't speak ill of our brother. Forgive our brother. Seek not to harm our brother. If you seek to harm your brother, he's a murderer. And you walk not in the light, but you're in the darkness still, John said. And many other Christian virtues do good. Help the poor, help the needy, you know, pray for one another, encourage one another in faith. Unless the Lord has left, left us some survivors, he would not have become, we would not have become like Saddam and we wouldn't have been like Gomorrah, you know, we talk about it. It's all over scripture. We're talking about it. Saddam and Gomorrah, what happened in Saddam and Gomorrah has become some, it's it become an a, a epitome of, of evil and wickedness. That's what it become like. It's become a holy flame of, of anything that is wicked and corrupt and evil. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. They behave like people like that back then, children of Israel. Not in the things that they do, but symbolic in a way because it symbolizes wickedness and you know, something like that. The multitude of your sacrifice, what are they to me? They come to God not with H E H artists. Heart, but with the heart, a r t, the art of worship, the ceremonies. 
The multitude of your sacrifice, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats when you come to appear before me who has asked this of you. This trampling of my courts. Stop bringing me meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moon, Sabbaths, and convocation. I cannot bear your wordless assemblies. New, your new moon feast and your pointed festivals. I ate with all my beings. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. You see, at the prayer life, the things that we do with no heart and authenticity, your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Listen to do right. See justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the cause of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But you, but if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Take away your song from me. I don't want to hear no guitar playing. I don't want to hear any sounds of piano, timbrels, and trumpet, and harps. I don't even want to hear those things, man. Because your heart is far from me. You're not listening. You're not doing the things that I, I told you to do. That's what we find in modern day church. Just today. I Kabad, the glory of God has departed. That's why you see all of these circuses and buffoonery within the place that is deemed a church. Be careful. Let us be careful, man. A lot of things can affect our prayer life. A lot of stuff can affect our God answer prayer. So just let us be faithful unto our God. Fight against sin with all help of the Holy Spirit and responsibility to abstain from Things that will weaken us, corrupt us, and make God set a bar to our prayers, will now answer our prayers. And even when we sing and worship, we will despise it because of our disposition and our self will and our maverick disposition and attitudes to do what we think we want to do, whether God please or return not. Warn to us if we don't do what God said to do. Simple. People, hope this be a blessing to you. And uh, remember to subscribe. Subscribe, man. And push forth the word of God. If you comment, let me know what you're thinking. Now you press the notification bell. When you hear it, that means this car is on the line. So take care of yourself, continue to read the Bible, trust God, believe in God, the power for power. Take care.